Okay, so Park Place, we know Park Place for third party maintenance, um, but I know, I think about a year ago now, you bought a company called Intuity, uh, and they are focused on network monitoring and analysis. So I guess if you're able to give us a bit of background behind that acquisition and maybe a little bit about what you've done with the technology you acquired since then. Sure, yeah, so we acquired Intuity in August of 2019. And at the end of the day, we have a very close relationship with our customers. So as, as you might know, we have 17,000 customers in 150 countries around the world. And we listen with both ears to customers. We try to understand their pain points and address them. So the reality is, is that we started to move beyond uh, a traditional TPM, third-party maintainer, when we introduced Parkview in uh, December 2017. And Parkview uh, provided remote monitoring uh, capabilities and services for our customers. So in speaking with customers and understanding their pain points, we understood that, um, that the level of chaos was increasing dramatically in IT infrastructure. You know, key questions that customers were asking themselves and us you know, they didn't know what they had in their environment. Um, how do I know if everything is up? How do, who do I call to restore availability? And is my infrastructure performing as well as it should be performing? And the reality is, is that we wanted to be able to do more for our customers. And in fact, our customers were actually asking us to do more. So when we acquired Intuity, we acquired a best-in-class network analytics company. And um, we've been able to actually grow the business, but we've also been able to um, take some of the assets and capabilities of Intuity and actually launch a new product under our Parkview brand. Uh, and we actually launched it um, this last week and it's called Park for Parkview Network Analytics. And so it takes some of the elements and the best aspects of Intuity and delivers it to customers. Truthfully, Intuity was a platform for a network analytics tool for enterprise customers, for large organizations that had a lot of endpoints and assets. Parkview Network Analytics um, is more accessible to the SMB marketplace. Okay, and if I'm right, I, I think you're pushing a sort of a concept, I can't remember if it's actually a product or, or a sort of concept, around discover, monitoring, support, and optimize, DMSO. Um, is that, this product you've just announced, part of that? Or, or can you just you know, enlighten us a bit about, about the DMSO uh, idea? Yeah, so that's a great question. So, you know, we, when we launched Parkview, we knew that we couldn't uh, continue to call ourselves a pure play TPM because we were evolving beyond that with the introduction of Parkview. And then once we acquired Intuity, we were well beyond the capabilities of a traditional TPM. So we actually worked with analysts. Uh, we work with analysts, in, including Roy Ilsley, um, Paul Bevins from Bohr, David Ackerman from Gartner, and Rob Brothers from IDC to actually get our heads around, you know, beyond what, what do we call ourselves? if we're not a pure play TPM anymore, that we do more, that we've evolved beyond a TPM. So, and the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, if the pain points were, what do I have in my, my environment? How do I know everything is up? That the, the sequence is the ability to discover what's in your environment. Then once you know what you have in your environment, to be able to monitor it, to keep it up and running, and then to support it, um, and then, quite frankly, optimization. So that's how we got to the discover, monitor, support, and optimize, DMSO. It was an iterative process. We worked with analysts all over the globe, and we worked with customers all over the globe. As I said earlier, we have a lot of very close relationships with customers, and we also have something called the client advisory board. So we have 25 plus customers that we meet with on a regular basis, and we shared with them the concept of DMSO and ask them, in fact, if that would help them. And they love the concept. Again, it was iterative. Um, I think some of the benefits for our customers are that our services can be either a la carte or bundled. We have flexible terms. There's a single invoice. 
there is a self-service component, and at the end of the day, it's also a single pane of glass, which is exactly what customers are looking for. Okay, and I, I'm thinking that uh, sort of DMSO doesn't sound a million miles away from AI ops, which I, I know is gaining momentum, but I, is it because you do the sort of the third party maintenance bit as well that you've come up with this sort of new um, area, DMSO? Well, I think we wanted, you know, we wanted to create something that was clearly differentiated and that signaled our evolution of the brand beyond TPM. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, you know, we, the tip of our spear really is maintenance, but nobody else has the parts inventory and the global infrastructure that we have. So we're uniquely qualified. We could have, you know, categorized ourselves differently, but we actually wanted to create a category and then own that category. You know, some, something else I'll share with you is, is that we have, um, we have customers who have actually come to us because they use TPMs, but as their infrastructures are becoming more complex, they wanted a TPM that had greater capabilities, who in fact was more sophisticated. In fact, we just wrote a case study about a very large hospital system in the United States that switched from, um, quote, one TPM to another uh, because they needed somebody with greater capabilities. And our roadmap and our new, new series of new products that we've been launching actually helps organizations um, to be able to you know, take the chaos and turn it into order. Yeah, I was just about to ask, actually, yeah, because you, you've referenced that particular customer. But I mean, everyone's talking about digital transformation um, and presumably DMSO is a, is a great tool. How do you, I guess, characterize its potential? Clearly, you've got people using it already, but do you think there's, there's still a long way to go in terms of people understanding what it can offer and then, you know, taking it on board? So I think when we created the category DMSO, they, it's, it's like we bought shoes that are a little bigger than we are. Uh, it's a category that we created that we're gonna continue to grow in. We have a very robust roadmap, new product roadmap. Um, so this month alone, we've introduced Parkview Network Analytics and Parkview Discovery. We'll be launching Parkview um, OS in November of this year, but we also have other um, initiatives, which I think are, which are dramatically helping our customers. We have a very robust portal. Um, and we also recently launched a mobile app called uh, PPT Tech Mobile, and it really is a portal in your pocket. So, you know, we're providing all kinds of tools. We're adding technology uh, to help our customers better manage their IT infrastructure. And we have a proven track record of um, taking chaos and turning it into order. And I would say that the, that the first stop obviously was maintenance. We made maintenance very, very easy. Everything from, you know, at this point, having been in the business for 30 years and having engineers who have on average 15 years OEM experience, we make it very easy for our customers. We've been there, we fixed that, we've got tremendous experience. The next step really was Parkview. So traditionally, when somebody had an issue, uh, there were eight steps in the, pro in the process to resolve an issue, to, to open a ticket and to resolve a ticket. With Parkview hardware monitoring, there are two steps. So we've significantly reduced the time, the complexity, um, and also the ease for the customer. And I'll also throw out that, you know, in the wake of COVID-19, the game has changed a little bit. And the reality is, is that we accelerated Parkview Network Analytics bringing it to market because of COVID-19. So what we saw was a greater need for people to have tools to monitor their VPN. And with Parkview Network Analytics, it's not, um, it's not a capital expense, it's an operating expense. Because the other thing that we've seen not only have we seen it, but we have ongoing conversations with analysts all over the world, um, inquiries have increased. And the number one inquiry from, custom, from CIOs, CTOs, uh, infrastructure directors has been, how can I save money? Now, the easiest way to save money, quite frankly, is to go with the TPM. But not only that, to be able to make sure that your VPN is up and running 
your, tu your tunnels are clear and that your bifurcated workforce, so some people working from the office, some people working from home, um, have access um, and, can, and are able to do their work. So COVID-19 has added an interesting layer. And quite frankly, we've been poised and positioned to be able to respond to that very, very quickly. And, and in terms of the, the sort of uh, size and shape of customers, if that's a, a right expression, when I mean, you referenced earlier that you may be been known traditionally for the, the sort of larger enterprise, but then the, the new product is focused more on the SME. So I guess a bit about that. And also, um, are all of these solutions on premise so people have to buy them and install them? Or potentially, are we talking about some software as a service um, offerings as well? So that's a great question. As, um, as a maintenance provider, we've got 17,000 customers and that runs the gamut. So we support 190 of the Fortune 500 customer, uh, of those on the Fortune 500 list. So we've got huge enterprise customers. We also, uh, for maintenance, play in the SMB space. Intuity, when we acquired Intuity, really was an enterprise solution. And by launching Parkview Network Analytics, we're making the tools more accessible to the SMB market. And yes, um, Intuity is a product and Parkview Network Analytics is software as a service. Okay, and in terms of the, um, the customers, you, as, as I say, you've alluded to a few, but are you able to share, particularly maybe with some of these new products, the evolution, I presume you've had some sort of beta testing with customers, giving you feedback and then you know, sort of the newer products out in the field. What, what, what have been the in, initial sort of um, thoughts? So yes, so Parkview Network Analytics, we've, we have had beta customers all going very smoothly and very well, and the same for Parkview Discovery. So it's interesting because, you know, again, we're constantly talking to customers and when a customer calls us up and they say, you know, we've just made an acquisition, um, that's, a key, that's a key point for us to jump upon because once, you have an acquisition, it becomes increasingly important to understand what's in your network. So to have a discovery tool and a discovery tool that actually uses Google Maps so you can see on a topographic map where all the assets are makes life a lot easier. So yes, all of the new products um, are beta tested and we do offer the opportunity to all of our cab members to test concepts ahead of time. And we have great, we've had great acceptance um, on the betas. For discovery, we're actually offering customers a free 30-day trial so that they can see if they like it. I think that um, you know, we're early on, but so far the results have been very, very positive. And in, I mean, it's, it's not essential, but I mean, in terms of trying to characterize, I suppose, Park Place's sweet spot, is it, I mean, sort of optimizing data center infrastructure? Is it a bit more than, a, um, obviously, downtime, you're eliminating downtime, you're, you're that, is there a sort of, philosophy you have, I guess, as a company? Yeah, so that's a great question, actually, especially for someone who's uh, coming from the marketing side. So we have a dual brand promise. Um, our initial promise and really where we, um, where we take a stand is called All About Uptime. So everything we're doing is driving uptime. All of our acquisitions, all of our new products are to support and drive uptime. Um, the other piece, to our brand promise is future proofing. So much of what we do is we get ahead of the technology curve to ensure that we can support products and that we also bring products to market that help our customers um, eliminate the chaos in their infrastructure and get a better handle on it. But that's a great question, thank you. Um, and in terms of the future, it's always nice to know, I mean, I think you referenced earlier, couple of new products coming out in the autumn. Uh, and I'm, I think I'm right in saying you acquired a, an American US um, service, uh, sorry, maintenance or service provider fairly recently. So um, is, are acquisitions as well as obviously technology launches still on your roadmap or, or what, what's going on? Yeah, so I, I would categorize Park Place's growth into three categories. So we've been in hyper growth mode really for the last four years. And our growth has been driven organically um, through new product introductions like Parkview, um, monitoring, uh, discovery, et cetera, and also through acquisitions. We've been a very acquisitive company. In fact, we've acquired 16 companies in the last three years. 
So this year alone, we've had two acquisitions. We had one um, which was to give us NOC capabilities in, um, in January. And then in the height of COVID-19, we made uh, another acquisition in the United States, which is a TPM called CHE. That acquisition, which took place about six weeks ago, was um, a TPM that had two key strengths. One was um, tape and the other was uh, experience and expertise in the federal space in the United States. So yes, we, we will continue to acquire companies. We will continue to acquire TPMs and we'll also continue to acquire companies that, that help our growth strategy, that help us fill out, fill out uh, the DMSO category and that also uh, add products to our portfolio. Okay, I mean, we've covered a fair amount of ground there, I think, in the, in the 15 or 20 minutes. Are there any other sort of points you'd like to make or any observations to, to, to leave the listeners with? Well, I think it's a very exciting time for Park Place. Um, we're growing, we're evolving. I think we're a company uh, to watch and uh, certainly entertain conversations. I think beyond, uh, beyond the fact that we've been very acquisitive, that we've grown tremendously, is, is that we're a great organization to do business with. Uh, our customers love us. They ask us to do more and we oblige. And I think that they're impressed that we listen as intently as we do. Uh, we're also an organization uh, that's very closely knit. We have an interesting culture. Our, um, our customers feel the culture and I'll tell you an interesting story. So we've actually engaged Ipsos to do some research for us based out of the UK. And as they were speaking to our customers, one of the themes that came across was our culture. And in fact, we've added a core value to our, our culture, which is kindness because our customers express that the way that we deal with situations, the way that we respond is always with kindness. And so I think in difficult times, uh, like during a time of COVID-19 and during a time where things are becoming more complex, it's great to have a partner that's confident, that's growing, that's bold, and that's also very kind. Okay, well, that's great. I really appreciate your time today, Jennifer. And thanks very much indeed. Thank you.